We've come on to Annan now, and this is Billy Jameson. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Keith. Welcome to Annan. Cheers, mate. Right. What system do you raise your pigeons? Irish natural system. Yeah. I find it's the best system for me. Yeah. What sort of racing do you like? I like the channel race, and that's like 434 miles plus right through uh, 600 miles New York. Yeah. New York. New York, yeah. aye. How many pairs do you keep? 28 pairs mainly, but this year I've 24 pairs. Yeah. That includes stock birds. Yeah. When do you pair up? Mostly, well, the channel birds don't get paired up to the middle of March. But some years I do pair my yearlings and some pairs of stock birds in the middle of February. Yeah. Using a small section. Do your birds race the programme? Yes, I race the programme, yes. My yearlings race to 300 miles, then I finish them. And the two year olds plus I use for channel racing only. Yeah. How about feeding them? Feeding, I feed a mixture of beans, peas, and maize. Yeah, good strong mixture like for the yeah. channel. Yeah. This is my red checker cock here. He's through the channel four times now and been in the result all four times. 75th Open Scottish National Rens as a two year old. He went to Rens again as a three year old in 1994 and he was 16th section 31st Open. He was my second bird up that year. He then went to New York the following season, 1995, and was 4th section 10th Open in New York, 611 miles. And last season again, 1996, he was 18th Open in New York. He's been an outstanding coach. He's also been caught at club level too. What family is he then, Bill? He's the, the old, the old family crossed with a, a coach. I got off my uncle Matt Jimmy Snavan and direct son of his, uh, his 1986 Scottish National winner for Nance. There's also an Anderson Tennant crossing him, direct of Anderson Tennant's when the year's boy was his first open Scottish National Satellite in 1984. What's his best nest condition he likes? The best nest condition is sitting eggs. That's anything from 10 days to 14 days. That's a, that's a preferred condition by me. Well, I'd like to send my channel pigeons on. How long have you been in the sport then, Bill? I've been in the sport since 1959, when I was a 14-year-old schoolboy. I joined my father in partnership that year, and uh, together, me and my father had great success flying his J.T. Jimison and son. We won the section in the Scottish National eight, ti eight times, I think, yeah, from Feliz, Sertilli and Nance. No from Renzo, but we had some great success at that point too. Yeah. And that lasted up until 1983 when I, when I bought this property, I decided to, to branch on my own. And I bought eight birds down from my father. And then eight birds, two of them is significant in the peasant family. I'm pleased to say I've went on and had some great success here in my own right. I've been uh, second Open Scottish National Lorenz and I have in fact took 47 Open Scottish National Certificates since 1988, including some top performances from the Blue Band from yeah. Renz. Uh, my father has been an excellent fan, sir. For many years he, he knew personally John Colpatrick and so really it's true to say that I've been brought up inside the pigeon loft. Yeah. And, uh, like I say, he's had uh, a lot of success, he's a, an accomplished fan in his own right. So I suppose a bit of it's rubbed off in this, you know, yeah. basically. Uh, I would just like to say that that uh, I think the thing about pigeon flying is that is you've got to concentrate and, and, and try your best and try and concentrate and keep up good performances. However, a lot needs to do with friendship in the pigeon fancy too. I mean, yeah. it's a thing that seems to be lacking nowadays, and uh, I really, in the game, part of it is the friend, friends that you make, you make in the game. Yeah, obtaining decent stock. Eh? Obtain, obtaining decent stock. Yeah, yeah, aye, yeah, aye. Uh, I do like to introduce pigeons, I will say that. I think part of my success doing here is due to the selection of uh, uh, the pigeons I've selected for cross breeding. Yeah. And that's been a big, a big part of it. This is a, a 1989 grizzle hen. She's bred down from from the old grizzle family, which was part of the the, the, the old violet bird lines. That hen was an excellent racer for me. She she was third section third up in the Scottish National Flying Club Sertillie race in 1991. She then went back to Sertillie the following year, and, and she again scored. Uh, after that, I stopped her for stock. Yeah, how far is Sartillion, Bill? 434 miles. What was her best nest condition? 
sitting eggs again. She was start, actually, she was stabbed open with a satilly on a small youngster. I slipped it under her dear race marking. All her other races, she, she's my preferred condition eggs. I've had very, very little success with small youngsters. This hen was an exception. This is one of Bill's natural sections in his very smart loft. At the moment, the pigeons are all breeding. How many young birds you breed each season then, Bill? I, I end up with about 36 to 40, to 40 yards. I yeah. by, the training, by the time the training finishes, and if training goes well, that is, I'm generally left by about 34, 36 or something like that. How far do you train them in? I train out of Appleby, 40, well, it's 45 mile flying. Yeah. It's about an hour and a quarter's fly. I know when the pigeons are getting fitter. Yeah. How far do they race? How far I race my youngsters depends on circumstance. If they're having a hammer, I've no nothing. I'll, I'll pull them off the road. Yeah, stop I'll them. pull them right off the road, stop them, because these are the future channel pigeons that are loft. And nowadays, I just don't think you can afford to, to hammer them. Yeah. So I, I'm no one of the fad, young bird national faddists. I'll, I'll, if, if everything's going well, I'll send a team to the young bird national. If the youngsters are getting a hammer, I'll pull them off the road. Yeah. It's the future I love to talk to them. You just can't afford to muck about with them. No. Do you like them to pair up when they're racing? No, no, all my youngsters are raced to the perch. Yeah. The, this blue pied hen here, bred in 1992, has been an exceptional pigeon for me. She's bred by a great friend of mine, Tom Gilbertson of Carlisle, and gifted to me. That hen flew right through the young bird national as a youngster, through the 300 miles as a yearling, and then as a two-year-old, she went to the second Sertillia National. I had a particularly good race that night, and she was the third win of three birds I popped on the day, and she was 63rd open in the Scottish National. The following year, she flew the Scottish National range race, a very hard range race, and she was fourth section, eighth open. Last year again, she scored for me at the that had been 61st open. She's consistent in itself, she was bred by Tom of, of his best pigeons. The Tom Gilbertson pigeons is having a big effect in my loft at present. They're winning, direct Gilbertson pigeons are winning as the cross speeds are also flying very promisingly. It's, uh, it's proven to be an outstanding cross. What's her best nest condition then, Bill? The best nest condition is sitting eggs again. Uh, she was up, up at the uh, uh, Santilli. As a two-year-old, she was sitting eight day eggs. At friends, when she was eight open, she was sitting six day eggs. I don't uh, worry too much about exact nest conditions, if, as long as I'm not sitting over 14 days in eggs. I don't like them over 14 days, but if a pigeon scores one year sitting six day eggs, I'm not going to try and know the condition of falling here to get a bang on six days. I'll accept 10 days or 11 days. Uh, it's no bad. I think the main concern is to, to get the pigeons fit to do the hours in the wing. What families of pigeons do you raise then, Billy? The, the family of pigeons that are, are based on pigeons I bought, I bought from my father at Violet Bank when I first started up down here. They, they're based on Kilpatrick, mainly Kilpatrick's with Proctor Smith Cross and one or two other pigeons crossed into them. And for years they were successful. For instance, the grizz all the grizzles in the family come from a Proctor Smith coat my father purchased from, from F. E. Neal at Ormskirt in 1958. Every grizzle we've got stems back to that one single grizzle coat. For there, I introduced pigeons, and I introduced pigeons on a, leg a regular basis, but birds I introduced in for Eric Fox of Bakewell proved to be outstanding close. They were a, a cross that, that really I didn't think was going to work at first, but, but then you could see the grandchildren starting to work through them. And from there I worked on that. And I've got an exceptional red chicken hen eggs, bred in 1985. She's still in the loft today. She's bred a phenomenal amount of winners, both direct and grandchildren and great grandchildren. Her cross has been immaculate in the family. She's a now, fantastic fence, yeah, Eric. Yeah, Fox. yeah. Now, now the, one, two thirds of the pigeons in the loft have got Eric Fox bud in them somewhere. Mm, brilliant. 
the uh, energy pigeons regular and the further the next best and may even be better than the, than the fox pigeons now were pigeons for Tom Gilbertson or Carly. Mm -hmm. Now I've known Tommy for years and, and funnily enough I've never really really tried these pigeons out to say but I went to a sale in Carlisle one night uh, one of the local clubs in Carlisle was having a sale I'd give to the youngsters so I took the youngster down and I was standing at the bar normal and uh, the sale started and then the auctioneer announced that Tom Gilberson pigeon was up and I just took a daft notion and stuck the hand up and ended up getting the, the pigeon without really without really seeing it so I went and picked it up at the end of the sale and and I I didn't, to be quite honest with you, didn't know, it was a blue pie, I wasn't very keen in it, I wasn't very stuck in it, so I, I took it, bought it to him, and I stuck it in amongst the morning. Come down to the loft next morning, and I threw it to myself, I compared it with my own pigeons, and I threw it to myself, and I said, Jesus, look what I've got here, it didn't look anything at all. I hammered that hen, and she got better and better. I clocked her for the young bird nationalist youngster, and to cut a long story short, she was 11th sex and 18th open range as a two year old. Mm -hmm. She's also bred me an, an exceptional cook in there now. So I told Tommy this and he, he, he further gifted me the following year the blue pied hen that he, I, he just saw previously there in the video. And for there he, he's given me birds out of his stock loft, the, the cream of his pigeons, outstanding team of pigeons in mm -hmm. Tommy's stock loft. And in, in, in the loft at present I've got a checker cork that, that I think has got a big future here. I think he's going to have a big say in the future of my loft. Yeah, any stock birds you keep? The stock birds I keep, it varies because it, like I say I bring pigeons in, I try them if they do. They stay, if they don't do it, they go out inside two years. I try them with two different mates. But generally, about a dozen stock buns. Sometimes more than that. Sometimes they'll bait bed, they'll come along and it'll pair up to channel pigeons. They use it as a safe mate for a good channel pigeon. Yeah. When do you pay stock birds up? The stock birds basically are paired at the same, many of the stock birds are paired at the same time as racers because a lot of my stock birds go up to my channel pigeons yeah. because they're there to stay at home for them. It limits your youngsters off them, but you kind of have the best of both worlds, you know. Right, Bill, thanks very much for letting me see your pigeons today. No credit to you. Right. Thanks very much for coming. It's been a pleasure showing you around, Keith. Cheers, mate.